Good morning, we have a Bosch dishwasher E24 error code. Very common issue with any dishwasher, it's not draining. But for Bosch, it's a little bit harder to get to components. So I'm going to walk you through how to replace the drain pump and the drain hose. Sometimes you just try everything and it still doesn't work. So then uh, you have to put some new parts on it. So we got a drain pump. And the uh, first thing you can do, it's an easy one, is check where the air gap is. I already have it pulled out here. First things first, always check that because that's the most common one why it's not draining. So you got this air gap sticking out somewhere in the back of your counter. Uh, this cap comes off two little tabs. On both sides and uh, don't take that off when the dishwasher is running because you might get water sprayed in your face so anyway take that off and and check if there is uh, anything stuck there I'm trying to do it with one hand and I can't do it anyway you push both of these pins in and pu pull that off and now uh, you see a hole if you can see it through all the way, nothing is there. Sometimes it can be stuck from the back end. And uh, that's why I took this hose off. This, uh, sometimes something gets stuck here, right at this section. So the cap alone is not 100%. But if nothing is there, then we gotta go further. Um, if this thing is overflowing, if you're getting water spraying out of here with a cap on, that means this hose is clogged. Sometimes you get a, a kink there, and uh, or sometimes it's just built up with oils, and um, it will basically overflow to this guy here. And you'll think it's a problem with the dishwasher, but it's the problem with the return hose. So we're gonna, yeah, we were now, since I came, this thing is working fine. I just was able to drain it. The code went away, but I've been here three times with the same issue. So I'm just gonna put a new hose and a new drain pump. So we're gonna just gonna drain it out real quick hold the reset button three seconds that means you went to the drain cycle press start close it up and just make sure since this is off oh it's draining really well right now it does the three pulses to get rid of the air out of the line you can see some air bubbles coming through and after that, it goes into continuous drain. So I just wanna get as much water as I can out of the dishwasher. I've been uh, actually taking them apart with the water in them if I cannot drain it. Um, you can shut back the water out of it go empty as it can be huh, it worked this time anyway doesn't mean it's gonna work in the future maybe there's something in the pump maybe something in the line a piece of glass could be especially if a wine glass broke then uh, definitely could be an issue some glass gets through this filter and it's laying in the bottom of the sump and uh, so if you're sticking your fingers in there be very careful and sometimes glass travels through the line and it could be intermittent. There's another thing you can check is this little guy here. There you go. Yeah. 
there we go. So here, oh, I actually can see some debris there. But anyway, you can see if the impeller is spinning, you can see the pump impeller there. A bunch of gunk there. The, nothing big stuck there. The impeller is spinning. So something is in the line further down. On some models, this hose on the other end has a little rubber flap, like on Samsung's. And that rubber flap prevents the water going back into the dishwasher. And that flap breaks off. And it gets stuck in the hose. So to, to get to that, you still need to take the whole dishwasher out. All right, so I'm gonna get these screws. Take the dishwasher out. There's a, sometimes some models the screws are from the side. I'm happy that the, this hose looks pretty long, so I don't have to disconnect it. I'm just gonna shut the water off to the dishwasher. Uh, I don't see the power supply, but sometimes you got a power cable coming out of here, it plugs in right into the outlet here. Sometimes it's hardwired, and you're lucky if the wire is long enough and then you can pull it out far enough I usually like to lay the dishwasher on its back so then none of the water leaks out if you lay it on the side or on the front all that little bit of water is just gonna pour out so this hose I'm gonna keep it high but probably it's gonna I'm gonna have to feed that in as I'm pulling it out so I can pull my dishwasher out so all right, I'll uh, do a next step here. And uh, I'll show you how to take the bottom off these wash dishwashers. Okay, so we got the cover that came off. A couple screws here off the bottom. This one had a raised floor, just a little bit. This floor was a little higher. So getting the legs up on the on the floor was a little hard. Sometimes you can turn these. You have to lift the dishwasher up, stick the screwdriver, turn the legs to get them shorter. There's the back leg. It shows the arrow. If I turn counterclockwise, it will lift the back leg. I think that leg is already up. So it doesn't get stuck. So I take the front off, raise the legs up, pull it up. I got these screws out. Not much room here. Sometimes you get like you get a lot more. I can take this piece off totally to help get this thing out. Okay, here we go. That's how it mounts to the granite countertops usually. So this screws on the sides of the of the cabinet and uh, there's all these weird random holes is for these tabs and um, then we get another half inch higher to get this thing up and, and it slides right out uh, if you feel resistance pulling it make sure your hoses are going in easily in there sometimes just help them. I feed them in. Um, on the Bosch, usually there's a long electrical cable that comes with the unit. Uh, so usually you have plenty of hose and electrical cable to pull the unit all the way up, which I like. I leave it connected. Just try not to run the cycle in an accident when I'm pulling it out. There we go. Plenty of plenty of cables. And now, um, since it's a laminate floor, I'm very lucky. Very durable. It will be wood. I would use sliders. And I'm gonna lay it on its back. Um, there we go. Power cable, water. Drain. Pretty simple. When you're pushing it back in, 
definitely try to feed the hoses as you go in so they don't get kinked in the back. Alright, I'm gonna get this thing situated. I'll show you how it looks on the bottom. Okay, so before we flip this thing on its back, which is the safest, then uh, nothing leaks when you put it on its back. Uh, there's two screws here, one and two to get the bottom base off. This hose will need to come out as we're pulling the base off and the door hinges need to come out. And uh, there's some more screws here, but they are not mandatory to come off. This plate can stay there. So you gotta take these hinges off on both sides. Just pull it with one hand. Can do it one hand anyway. This comes up and out. Okay, here it is. I love Bosch. Great dishwashers. Design, awful. Well, awful to work on. You gotta pull the whole base off. Even uh, another German brand, Mealy, has a better idea. They have an access panel that comes off. Anyway, this is the back leg that I was talking about. Screw the screw. And the leg goes in these two legs super hard to work so stuck oh and they ran a screw in great somebody did a good job installing it so, so the legs cannot be moved anyway uh, we don't need that anymore we got it out we took these guys off um, is the control board Make sure it doesn't get any water on it even though it's pretty sealed I unplug the power from here you can unplug it sometimes like I said inside the cabinet there's a power for garbage disposal and dishwasher and outlet sometimes you gotta go to the breaker box um, I did unhook this guy already I know when I start pulling the base off some water will coming out still and uh, so this is a short hose that was it's going to the pump I had a mouse once chew through this little hole and there was a drip inside it was a different error code but it says basically there's a float inside this this base so doesn't want to let me go huh Nothing really holding this. Oh yeah, two more things. One more thing on both sides. So there's uh, this plastic tab. If you can see, really hard to see. I guess you could pop this thing out out of here. This plastic tab holds the whole base in place. Try and do one-handed, impossible. Really don't want to take this out. Probably gonna have to. Anyway, some models this is a little bit more exposed. But anyway, this tab catching on that metal prevents this side of the base moving out. On the back, we have those screws that I showed you. So there's nothing holding. And also the tensioner, if the cables will be in tension, is holding from the base popping off. So when you start popping the base off, you gotta get these tabs, those screws, and the tensioners off. Uh, there's a couple other things that will hold the base kind of attached to. Once you get in there, there's gonna be a float switch in here. You can pop that off pretty easy. And then a cable to the to the water supply valve, and then the base will pretty much be almost loose to swing out and then you get uh, good access to the water pump the water pump the drain pump I mean you can see from this side this is the float switch that I was talking about diverter motor the water pump is on this side it's, it's 
それで It's behind, I mean, there's so little room for the control board. I guess I, if I'm not replacing the water line, I wouldn't be even probably taking the base off. But since I am, yeah, this is it. I'm gonna have to get this tab off on this side. Okay, we need two hands here. I'll show you how it looks once it's off. Okay, I got it cracked open. So the other hose came off too. This is uh basically that's how it's what's holding them in place is this little channel keeping them from coming off. Um and that this hose needs to go into this groove right here. When you put them back together, uh, the float switch, just a couple tabs, pretty easy to come off. The, the water, water valve connector, this side is off. Um, the control board, a couple cables holding it here. I'm gonna try a uh, this one handed. There you go. All right, the only thing I got left is it's this guy. I'm gonna try to leave that attached. I got my uh, water pump that it's on just a twist on and my drain line. I'm gonna replace this guy even though it looks pretty clear. Looks like there was some leaking inside. Um, usually they leak around this base here. Well, they usually don't leak. I've seen it once. Uh, this one has a different issue. The water got in when we were trying to service it from the top. Um, this is the main pump. It's pretty easy to take off. It just needs to take this clamp off. And um, sometimes stuff is stuck in the main pump. If it's vibrating, now you're having good pressure. I want to check that. And I just have to put a different clamp. This is not a reusable clamp. And for the I'm, now I'm gonna I'm not gonna be taking this off today since it's washing fine. Um yeah. This is the tab that we need to press. Wish I can get a better angle. Okay, here we go. Got the pressed. Turn, turn, turn. Come out. There we go. Totally clean. Take this out just to check. Totally clean. The pump. Feels really good, but I'm gonna replace it. Um, there's nothing else left, really. So I'm gonna put a new pump, a new hose, and uh, yeah, let's hope this is gonna be the end of it. Okay. We'll put it back together, put a new parts on it. We'll see how it goes. Base, 
the base is back on. Uh, it was a little easier this time. I learned a few tricks. I uh, left the board dangling until I was uh, basically got the base all the way on. Um, these guys, you could pop this water assembly from the inside and screwing the uh, inside cap and the whole thing comes off. Might be a little easier, but I was able to push this in and then pop these hoses in these grooves and um, and then get the case. Actually, the case was all the way on the back, just a little bit off on the front. Um, one time I was wrestling really hard, but this part wasn't lining up. This hose wasn't getting in this groove. So this time I made sure that this goes in, the, in line in the groove and then the front got on a lot easier. Uh, getting this this piece off might be a little easier, but there's uh so it's just a couple screws here, this one and this one, and then you got a better view on what's going on in the front. And then uh, after that, I popped in the float switch, just back back in line. I plugged in the water and the water valve. The pump I already had it hooked up. And I just gotta put this clamp back on. And uh, these clips automatically clip back in there. Yeah, this is perfect. And, uh, and I got the hinges back on and that will keep the base from coming off also. Anyway, I'm gonna stand it up. I'll get back up, see how it works. Okay, I got a washer hooked back up. I'm gonna leave it out on the first test. I got the power plug back in. I put the drain gap back in there. I wanna hear how it's draining. I got the water turned on. I'm just gonna check that nothing leaking from the drain gap. Uh, the water connection, since the lines got pulled a little, I'm gonna check those. Also want to check inside around the drain pump, which you won't be able to see much because the underneath the pump there is a drain pan. So if it's leaking bad, the water should start collecting there. Just gonna run a quick cycle. Start, close, the red light means it's running, it's gonna try to drain first, there's nothing in there. I did put that little white piece back in there, because without it, it's not gonna drain properly. The white piece, I mean, this guy right here. When the hole is too big, it doesn't create a good suction. So, turn it back on. Um, I think main two main connections would be these guys here. Just making sure these don't leak. Everything is kind of wet here because I took it apart. All the water came out of it. Um, so there's a float switch. There's a bunch of residue from the previous leak, but we got that taken care of. That water valve, I've seen it leak once. And uh, yeah, the dishwasher starts draining on itself. So that's a common one. It's pretty easy to replace. Basically, is a just you push a clip and you can replace it without taking the base off. And you can do it. Okay, so it's filling up. Water going in. You can do you can dry it off with a paper towel and see if there's any new driplets forming. So there was another connection over there that I pulled it out. It looks
looks pretty solid so far because it's all water right here right now in this line i can hear it washing open it up slowly okay not a, not that much water but usually it adds more water later in the cycle so i'm just gonna cancel it push start one more time close it The pump pulsates three times. Here's the second time. Here we go. A little bit more. There we go. Three times. So now it should be continuous. Okay. Sounds like it went. Wasn't that much water in it. There you go, it's empty. Okay, everything's working. I'm gonna install it back in there. Hopefully, <clears throat> the problem solved. I didn't see anything visually wrong with it. There was a couple pieces of debris when I was draining the hose. The pump doesn't look chewed up, so it doesn't mean any glass was there. Sometimes you, you can see it's all scratched up. That means there was glass in there rattling around for a while sometimes you can hear when you rattle the hose you can hear you can hear glass in there tinkling and you can't see it I don't see anything so still a mystery why it wasn't draining but I know I got everything I got the drain air gap from both hands checked I got the line replaced i got the water pump replaced i checked the small hose from the from the dispenser water dispenser to the pump um everything is solid so um if the air code comes back i'll call a, a bad motor uh, control board but uh, at this point i'm pretty confident it's not gonna come back so all right, I'll keep you posted. E24, um, most common error code for Bosch dishwashers. Hopefully yours is easier than this one. Like I said, most of the time is the air gap fault. Just take that all apart, drain into the bucket, pull that white piece out of here, suction with the shop vac, and hopefully you don't have to replace all of these things that I did. But, um, yeah. That's how it's done. First time I did it, it was took me three or four hours. And I was not enjoying that. Uh, this time I think I did it an hour and a half. The whole thing. So, it can be done. Uh, putting it back together is the hardest part. So, I'm not, I'm not wishing anybody to go through it. The first time will be definitely a challenge, but anyway, it can be done. Good luck. Okay, so after testing it, found out the three drains, there was still water a little bit left with all this new stuff. So I ended up um, taking a second look. I put a big glass thing over the, the air gap to see how high it's spraying the water. It was spraying about this high, but it was spraying on an angle. And usually it, the fountain shoots straight up. So that made me think there was something more. And I, so I looked and uh, here, and more stuff went through, through the air gap and it stuck somewhere middle. So there's nothing from this end, nothing from that end. But it was down in the middle. And I think this is going to be a main problem. So, yeah, this thing sounds a lot different now. And uh, I don't want to say that it was a main culprit. Because I did take this thing off and I was draining directly into the bucket. I was getting really good stream. 
So I'm guessing somewhere in between removing the line. Yeah, maybe it was when I was running the final test. The main the piece moved through and it got caught in there. And then I was when I was taking the line off, I didn't see anything in the line. So just the bad luck. Uh, but it's possible that it's been there from the beginning. I didn't see it either. Although I did test it a few times, so always um, check the air gap 50 times before you take the dishwasher apart. I'm going to show you how it sounds now when it's draining. So we got water there, not that much. Kill this. Yeah, I was uh, showing the customer how well it's draining and uh, it didn't drain all the way and then I ran it again and it didn't drain all the way either even though it was draining a little so yeah this is a good way to test it put a, a glass a glass thing over and see how high the stream is shooting up if it's only half an inch it's not enough two three inches should be pretty good um, just be ready to open up the door if you have water pouring everywhere you open the dishwasher door and it should stop the drain except on the LG on the LG you open the door and it's still draining and it'll be shooting water everywhere and until you unplug the power so this test is good but be ready for a lot of water anyway I think we're done. This one's fixed.